thriving, playing, living life to the fullest. Our mission for Kansans since 2003. We are Kansas Spine and Specialty Hospital, proudly supporting KPTS, public television for Kansas. The following program is brought to you by TZ Productions, celebrating KPTS's nearly 50 years of community support in South Central Kansas. Great starts here on KPTS. It is time for another half hour of Hatterberg's People. Coming up, like in the movie Sister Act, they're in this Las Vegas casino and all the nuns are running around and she says, try to blend in. I love that line, I'm trying to blend in. <laughs> I can't really, but I try. She marched to the beat of her own drum and that's part of what made her so special and made this place so special. We'll take a trip back in time to the medieval castle right along Kellogg Drive in Wichita and visit the fascinating woman who built it. Plus, and this is like homecoming for this car. Wichita attorney and car buff Phil Knighton has always wanted a Jones automobile. Only six are believed to be in existence. Did you know the air capital used to be home to an automobile factory? Only few of the cars made there still exist. And this Wichita man had just purchased one in 1994. Learn about the time this Jones 6 came home to Wichita and why it became such a prized possession. Also, it just puts something into you that you can feel it, you know. It comes out, you know, that's all. It just makes you feel good. Kick off your shoes and set a spell. There's nothing like a front porch banjo concert. Jack Hockett performed for free every day in Salina. We'll travel back to 1980 and give you a listen. And I was going to make my debut at New York City Opera in the role of Turandot by Puccini. And so we had a whole uh, part of the herd over there on the grass. It was so beautiful. So I just started in on In Quest Maybe opera is more your cup of tea. You'll meet the woman who sang Puccini to the cows in Kansas and also to the crowds in New York City. She was the big time star who realized where the grass was actually greener. Hello, I'm Susan Peters. And I'm Larry Hatterberg. Those stories are all queued up and ready to roll. Another edition of Hatterberg's People starts right now. These stories are like old friends. Their lives radiate from the screen like prophets of the past. They were teachers, but not in a classroom. Instead, they taught about life to those around them who cared to listen, and I was their student. Thanks for joining us, everyone. It is great to have you with us. We're going to begin with a remarkable woman who didn't let time or place stop her from living a fantasy. Sharon Lawrence loved the romance and the mystique of medieval Europe, and she resolved to experience and share it, even though she lived in present-day Wichita. Sharon is the only person Larry featured three times on Hatterberg's People, once in 1993, 96, and again in 2007. And now we are going to show you each of those reports back to back. And you'll see how the story evolved through the years and how she evolved through the years. The story of Wichita's only medieval castle and the fascinating woman who built it. This is not a fortress, this is an idea. Sharon Lawrence has a dream. A dream from another time, from another place. It's a 13th century tower she calls Stargate Hermitage. Located adjacent to one of Wichita's busiest streets, her stone tower along 54 turns many ahead. People have written me letters and stopped by just to say, it's wonderfully inspirational. I just love to see it. Sharon is in love with the Renaissance period. She's a member of the Society of Creative Anachronisms. She enjoys the dress of the period, but the stone turret in her backyard is her love. I did a great deal of sacrificing and extreme hard work to produce this dream. 
it had to not only be in my heart and mind, but I had to work extremely hard. I was willing to do that day and night and hold that vision for nearly four years. For her, the Renaissance lifestyle is real, very real. Well, I think I lived then. It's a remembering. I was there, it's like home. If some folk will accept that and some won't. I just try to fit in as best I can. Like in the movie Sister Act, they're in this Las Vegas casino and all the nuns are running around and she says, try to blend in. I love that line, I'm trying to blend in. <laughs> I can't really, but I try. In this backyard, she wants to build a chapel to create a place to meditate, to relax, and a place just to contemplate life. When I was in high school, history was duller than toast. I didn't care at all, but I came to care because I want to know where we have, as a people and a planet have been and where we are going. The three-story tower affords a perfect view of Highway 54. But why build the tower so close to the traffic? You have to bloom where you're planted. I live here, so I built it here. It's considered like a roaring, raging river. It's, it's noise all the time. And yes, when visiting her tower, there are those who don't understand. For Sharon Lawrence, <laughs> that's OK. <laughs> Take what you can understand. Take what you can love. Forget the rest. It's a beautiful castle. Thank you, sweetheart. I see it in existence like I had hoped for and more. And I look out every night at it, every day. And mostly, though, I see what it can be for the people who come, for the kids. Sharon Lawrence built the tower of her dreams. Yes, yes, it's taken up my whole life, as it turns out. <laughs> a Renaissance-style tower in her backyard, adjacent to one of Wichita's busiest streets. It is like the many towers I saw in the European castles of different ages. My name is Lady Casimira. Oh. <laughs> As a member of the Society for Creative Anachronisms, the Renaissance is a period admired by Lawrence. I'm an English noblewoman of about 1485 or 1500. I just wanted, did you travel a lot and pick up your things on your travels? Your... Some of them, but you know what? Most of them came from garage sales. You're kidding. No. I, oh my gosh. I can't believe it. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. You are delightful. <laughs> this week, she opened her backyard Thank castle you. that she built stone by stone so Wichita could take a look. They did. I don't know. I just had to do it. I wanted to create an environment that would feel like Europe and share it with other people. And so if they never get to Europe, they can come here and uh, maybe feel something that I did. I haven't cleaned it for two or three years like I have this week. <laughs> the tiny little windows came from a garage sale for $10 from an indoor hutch. I love to have the school kids come. I can teach them some things about history and makes it more real for them when they can be in the castle and so forth. Do you think anybody could do this if they just wanted to? No. No, I don't. I, well, I tell you what, you could, if you want it more, more than you want air if you were drowning, if you want it that bad, yeah, you could do it. It, it was a commitment with everything I have. Money, time, energy, I've made tremendous sacrifices. I never dreamed altogether what it was going to be, but it just has to be. I can't stop. I can't not do it. Not far from Hillside, along Kellogg, it sits. I built it to share with people. It's a dream, and it is Sharon Lawrence's dream. Tell children about medieval times, bring it into their life and knowledge, and to just have happy occasions here. 
you have a dream, you have an idea, and you work toward that, whatever it is you want to do. A Renaissance-style tower, and next to it, a small chapel, also of Renaissance design. I did all the stucco work with the pie server, then painted it, and all this stone came from Eureka, Kansas, because that's where I was born. I wanted everything in here to mean something. Estate sale, garage sale, garage sale, chairs. The tower is three stories, built by Sharon and volunteers, and it has those castle touches. I got him at the Hutchison State Fair before I ever laid a stone or did one thing. And my daughter and I carried him through the state fairgrounds, just clear to the pickup. And one guy, he looked and he said, boy, when she goes after her man, she goes after her man. <laughs> also on the second floor, a walkway to the still unfinished chapel. This is the chapel. Not quite done, but getting close. I want it to be done before my open house. I only faltered twice in 18 or 19 years. Once I walked out and I said, what am I doing? And if they don't understand it or don't like it or don't approve of it, they can just go on, just stay out of my way. And finally, the turret, the top of the tower where Kellogg traffic is a constant. Oh yeah, it's ever present. It's like a roaring river. You kind of get used to it. I have to get used to it. I live here. But her tower is the refuge. Definitely. Yes, 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 yes. Well, a very nice and fascinating woman, a true Kansas character. But unfortunately, Sharon is no longer with us. She passed away in 2016 at age 74. Now, the castle and her house, which sat in front of it, were recently sold. We don't at this point know what plans the new owner has for it. Now, when Sharon was alive, of course, she'd give tours through it and everything, it's and she'd so dress up in the, yeah. in the Renaissance garb, and it was really quite special. So it'll be interesting to see what the owner does. Okay. He, they now have a castle in their backyard. The new owner has to advertise it and let people back in again. He doesn't have to dress up, or he, she, mm. but just to let people see what's, what's there, it's so cool. That would be nice, but we don't know what their priorities are. We'll have to see what happens. We're gonna call them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Tell them, and, they need to open that thing up again. And we'll find out the rest of the story. Okay, Okay. <laughs> as Larry always <laughs> does. Okay, from castles to cars, and one car in particular that has a unique Wichita connection. Now, just before the aviation era got off the ground, a Wichita company tried to gain traction in the fledgling auto industry. Now, the car was called the Jones 6. These machines were only built for a few years before the factory burned down, and of course the company went kaput. But decades later, a man named Phil Knighton just had to have one. In 1909 came the revolutionary Model T. In the early days of the automobile industry, Henry Ford received most of the publicity. In 1914, he astounded the world. But in little old Wichita, the car industry was alive and well, at least for a while. It's a solid car, a good car uh, for its day. 3,000 of the Jones 6 automobiles were built in Wichita between 1914 and 1921. And this is like homecoming for this car. Wichita attorney and car buff Phil Knighton has always wanted a Jones automobile. Only six are believed to be in existence. And Knighton found this one in Corpus Christi. It's built in Wichita in 1919. Uh, this is, will be the first Jones that's on the streets running around in the parades to be seen locally. Knighton wrote a research paper on the Jones 6 in college in the 60s, and for years he's wanted one of his own. Oh, I just get the satisfaction and I think, uh, again, the, uh, the pleasure, just pure pleasure of, of the interaction with people. And uh, it's always fun to work on something that is historic. This is the first old car I've had that to me has a history. Now, there's a lot of work left to do on this car. Almost every part has to be refurbished. 
The car really was quite roomy. Uh, some of the older folks come up to me with a twinkle in their eye and tell me a lot of things happened in the back seats of these cars. <laughs> now, Wichita does have one other Jones 6 automobile, and it's on display at the Wichita Historical Museum. But Knighton's car will be out and about and available for Wichitans to see and touch. I just like to see them run, see them under their own steam going down the road, and uh, let the older folks who remember these cars uh, come up and see the light in their eyes uh, when they say, ah, oh, my grandfather, my father, or I had one of these when I was young. The plant where the car was made is now part of the Coleman Company plants on 37th Street North. This is the famous Continental Red Seal 6 engine that powered these cars. Car buffs like Knighton will spend hours discussing how the carburetor, transmission, or that old engine worked. Well, I think this is about a 45 horsepower engine. That's the fun of the old automobiles, especially those made right here in Wichita. I've always just kind of fancied owning one. Now that was 1994. Phil spent about five years restoring that car and he still has it. He drives it from time to time and shows it off occasionally at charity events. Fascinating man, fascinating car, fascinating piece of Wichita history. I'm so glad he saved it. I, you know, we're going to have to look that up online. Jones 6, Wichita, mm -hmm. Kansas. I bet there are pictures of the factory yeah, yeah. And, and all kinds of things. Yes, and at the Wichita Historical Museum, you can see another Jones car. I think it's on the second or third floor. You can? Yes. There you go. Yes. Oh boy, Larry, another, you know so much. Another reason to visit the Historical Museum. By the way, love that museum. Yeah, it's an it's incredible great. museum. It is wonderful. Now that you bring it up. Thank you. Okay, now how about good old down-home banjo concert? Not sure where to find one? Well, back in 1980, you didn't have to look any further than Jack Hockett's front porch in Salina. His concert hall isn't large by professional standards, but the front porch for Jack Hockett is all the platform he needs. The banjo, along with several other instruments, have been Jack's entertainment for most of his life. He's never studied professionally and can't read music. He'd just rather feel his way along, and that's part of his philosophy. You really love it, don't you? Oh, I do for a fact. I don't know, it's, uh, it just puts something into you that you can feel it, you know. It comes out, you know, that's all. It just makes you feel good. It's, uh, it's uh, I don't know, Larry, it's just a God-given talent. I love it. And in other words, that's what soothes my nerves and gets me into good humor. And, and as fellow said, gets me on top of the world again. It's what I can sit down and beat the fire out of this old banjo or take the fiddle and wear the hair out of the bow, well, then I'm on top. I just bang it out, I can't play it, but I bang it out, it suits me because I'm doing it. <laughs> you learn by doing. If you don't try, you never learn. I get this thing out here sometimes when I'm not bothered, and I'll get, think of a piece that I learned back when I was a boy, and I'll keep on with it till I play it. Just those things that you think of and you figure you have it to do, and do it. Very good advice from a very contented man. From Salina, Kansas, this is Larry Hedeberg. Now those front porch concerts came to an end just a few years later in 1983 when Jack passed away. He was 75 years old. But everybody had a great time because Jack would be sitting out on his porch and he'd have that banjo going yeah. and he was just, he'd have a smile on his face <laughs> and he had a great laugh. And laughing with that banjo, you could just tell he was just having the time of his life. Joyful, joyful time. It was and a joyful time in the neighborhood. I, I, I love your stories from way back. I mean, They're 1980, fun. that was really, really cool. Well, you know, the, 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 the people will pass on, but the, really the stories don't die because they become a part of Kansas history. Larry, does people pass on, 
but the stories don't die. They don't die. They True just live words on. were never spoken. And, you and have a way of putting things. we learn from each and every person. Don't you? Yeah, we yeah. do. Inquistorigio. Here's another musician whose audience ranged from kings to cattle. Now she performed at both Carnegie Hall and out in the back 40 at her ranch near Lindsberg. Rebecca Copley Johnson was kind of a big deal, but she never acted like it. These are the faces of a diva. Rebecca Copley Johnson is one of this nation's prominent young sopranos of the opera world. Her voice fills concert halls around the globe. At home in Smolin, Kansas, it fills the countryside. <laughs> One time I sang, I was, I was going to make my debut at New York City Opera in the role of Turandot by Puccini. And so we had a whole uh, part of the herd over there on the grass. It was so beautiful. So I just started in on Inquistorigio. Something like that, you know, and all the cows stop, sort of like they're doing right over there. <laughs> She's not who you would expect to find here in the rolling hills. This whole area has taken, taken an interest. Um, the Smoky Valley, Lindsberg, etc. It's very important to me, and it keeps me centered. It keeps me grounded. On stage in Paris or Vienna, Rebecca receives standing ovations. Back home, her audiences have other priorities. Don't you a little softer, will you? <laughs> On the prairie, the wind is her concert master, the cattle, her critics. Coming for to carry. Raised in a musical family in Lindsberg, her roots are deep in the prairie earth. Her religion and her husband Don contribute to her success. Sick ass, sick ass. If I thought I was in this world doing it by myself, well, I couldn't do it. Not a, not a chance. I really love what I do, and I love it so passionately that sometimes it, I just hate it. <laughs> I'm so lucky, and yet that's not the be-all, end-all. Being here together with Don, the rest of our extended family, that's what's important, taking care of what we have. Love is where you find it. I'm living a fairy tale. I really am. Rebecca had a great career performing, and now she is passing on what she learned along the way. She currently serves as Director of Vocal Studies at Kansas Wesleyan University in Salina. We had a great time filming that because we're back in the, you know, the South 40 and all yes. of the cattle there, and she is singing opera, as you just saw, yeah. opera to those cattle. It was a moment. <laughs> I bet, you know, I bet they really could hear it, and they really, well, you don't know what cattle are thinking, but I bet they appreciated it. You know? Well, I think they did. They got attention and, you know. But it was just so Kansas. Here's this incredibly <laughs> talented woman singing to cows. Yeah. You know, from Carnegie Hall to the cows. I love it. So anyway, cool. Great story. Really neat. All right. Every week, we ask you to send in questions or comments. So we decided this week we'd take a moment to share a couple of those emails with you. This first one is from Ed. He writes, Larry. I've been watching your stories on KPTS, have followed your stories over the years and appreciate you sharing mine years ago. I just wanna thank you for your efforts to share the stories of so many wonderful people in our state. Hope all is well with you. Take care, Ed. Thanks, Ed, for that comment. We really appreciate it. And now, here's a note from Kay. She says, 
Hi, I just watched the episode tonight. I love this program. It's so relatable living in Kansas. It is fantastic. Why have I not <laughs> seen this before? Kay, I don't know why you haven't seen it before. Remember, the Hatterbergs people started in 1974, Gee. and it ran on KTV for, from 1974 to 2014. And now here we are. So we're glad to have a new viewer, though. We need all viewers. Okay, so on. it's 7 o'clock mm -hmm. every Thursday, yeah. KPTS, Channel 8. That's right. And then it runs again on KSN on Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. We're just everywhere. We are <laughs> everywhere. But, you know, uh, make sure you continue to watch Channel 8 because there'll be promos on yeah. when it's going to air and when they repeat it. And, and that's how you can hear when Hatterberg's People airs. And we hear comments all the time out and about, that's don't right. we, Larry? And great people here at Channel 8, great producers, great camera people, great everything. So we're glad you're following us. Real television here is produced at exactly. Channel 8. Exactly. <laughs> we love hearing from you. Tell us what you think of the show and share any ideas you may have. That email address, once again, people at kpts.org. Yeah, it's so fun to, to see what people are thinking about the show. Reaction. And uh, if you have any complaints about the show, let us know that too you know we want to we want to improve and get better we'll improve not complaints but suggestions suggestions i'm sure what they have no word. complaints about <laughs> this show <laughs> all right everybody that is a wrap for this week we are really glad you took the time to watch and we will see you again next time by the way this was the 38th episode of the half hour hatterbergs people show and there are more on the way so until next time i'm susan peters 38 we've done can 38. you believe it and i'm larry hatterberg thanks for watching everyone we'll see you next time the preceding program was brought to you by tz productions supporting KPTS and the communities it serves in South Central Kansas. Great starts here on KPTS. Support also comes from viewers like you. Thank you. For a free copy of this program, become a new member of KPTS for a $40 contribution. If you are already a member, just send $25 for shipping and handling. Be sure to include the program's name, date, and time.